Chapter 2 Grandpa Lazaro sat up in bed when Sierra walked into his apartment on the top floor of their brownstone. He regarded her with a concerned shake of his head, the jowly folds under his chin waving back and forth, his claw-like hands clutching the sheets. The old man had barely said anything since his stroke, but occasionally he'd blurt out random boleros from back in the day. Today he seemed different, though. His gaze was sharper and his lopsided mouth curved into a frown. Mm, lo siento, lo siento, lo siento, he muttered. What, abuelo? Sierra said. What are you sorry for? Lazaro looked away, scowling. Ceiling high windows around her grandfather's bed made the room feel like the crow's nest on some urban pirate ship. Outside, streetlights blinked to life along the streets of bed sty as the swirling orange clouds gave way to dark blue. All over Brooklyn, folks were heading out to their stoops and strolling the avenues to take in another warm New York night. Sierra's phone buzzed again. Benny was probably trying to rush her along so they could get to the party at Sully's. Sierra double-checked that Lazaro's meds were all in order, his glass of water filled, his slippers by the bed. Mm, lo siento, lo siento, lo siento. Grandpa Lazaro muttered again. Another buzz. Sierra growled and looked at her phone. You coming? Your mama down here talking my ear off, Sierra. Come on, girl. If you don't come your ass downstairs in the next two minutes, I'm out. I swear to God, Sierra. She rolled her eyes and pocketed the phone. You good, Abuelo? The old man looked up suddenly his dark brown eyes locked with Sierra's. <sighs> Venga acá, mija. I have to speak with you. Sierra stepped back in shock. His eyes were clear and serious. Lazaro's stroke had left him with full movement of his body. He could take care of himself for the most part, but this was the first time he'd made any sense in a year. Grandpa Lazaro lifted a skin and bones arm and waved Sierra closer. Venga acá, Sierra, quickly. We don't have much time. She crossed the room, his warm brown hand wrapped around her wrist. Sierra almost yelped. Listen to me, mija. They are coming for us. Tears appeared in Lazaro's foggy eyes. For the shadow shapers. The who? Abuelo, what are you talking about? I'm so sorry, Sierra. I tried to do right. In the end. No, Abuelo, I don't understand. What's going on? Oye! Maria, Sierra's mom, called from downstairs. Sierra! You coming? Benny's here and she says you're late. <sighs> Finish the mural, Sierra. Finish the mural quickly. <clears throat> the paintings are fading. His voice trailed off and those old eyes blinked a few times. So, we'll all be lost. Abuelo, what do you mean? The mural in the junk lot? Manny had just said the same thing to her, but it wasn't anywhere near done. That's going to take me all summer. I can't finish any time soon. Lazaro's eyes sprung open again. No, no puede. You must finish it, Sierra. Mm, finish it now. As soon as possible. There. He squeezed her wrist tighter. She felt his hot breath on the side of her face. They are coming for us. Coming for the shadow shapers. He released her and slumped back against his pillows. Who's coming, abuelo? What are the shadow shapers? Sierra! Maria called again from the first floor. You hear me? Benny says, I'm coming, mommy! Sierra yelled. Lazaro shook his head. The boy Robbie will help you. Ask him for help, Sierra. You need help. I can't. It's too late. He nodded his head, eyes closing again. No puedo, mija. No puedo. 
rob you from school? Sierra said. Abuelo, how do you even know him? Robbie was a tall Haitian kid with long locks who had shown up mid-year with a goofy grin and wild drawings covering every surface of his clothes, his backpack, his desk. If Sierra had been the kind of girl who gave a damn about boys and their cuteness, Robbie the walking mural would find himself somewhere on her top ten list. He will help you, Lazaro whispered, his head drooping. You need help, Sierra. They are coming for us all. We don't have long. I'm... I'm sorry. Sierra! Mario called. Lazaro closed his eyes and let out a loud snore. Sierra backed toward the door. Her phone buzzed again. She turned around and ran down the stairs. And so I looked at the headmaster. Maria Carmen Corona Santiago said to Benny as Sierra walked into the kitchen. And I said, yes, my students will be reading that book today. She slapped the kitchen table and they did. Wow, Benny said. Maria turned to face Sierra and Benny made a help me face. So you finally decided to show up, Maria said. I was just telling Benny about the time they tried to ban those books. Sierra bent down and kissed her mom on the cheek. Maria was still in her crisp blue pantsuit. Her graying black hair was pulled back into a sharp bun, and her makeup was immaculate, even at the end of a long day. I'm sure she was thrilled to hear that story again, Sierra said. Maria swatted her away. Who taught you to be so sarcastic? I can't imagine. And why aren't you changed yet? I thought you said you were ready. Sierra looked down. She was still wearing the same t-shirt with torn off sleeves, pleated skirt, and combat boots she'd been painting in. And her fro stretched magnificently around her in a fabulous, unbothered halo. She'd stopped by her room just long enough to throw some extra bangles around her wrists and beaded necklaces over her head. And that was that. I mean, Benny stood. I think you look great, Sierra. That was definitely not true. Benny and Sierra had almost opposite styles, and they never got tired of letting each other know their opinions. Tonight, Benny had on creased gray slacks and a button-down maroon top that matched her tortoiseshell glasses. Well, it's been lovely, Mrs. Santiago. Come on, Sierra, she said, smiling a little too hard. She took Sierra's arm and led her toward the door. We're going to be late. Benaldra, since when have you taken Sierra's side on a fashion issue? Maria demanded. You know what? Never mind. Have fun, girls. Be safe, okay? Sierra stopped at the doorway. Hey, mommy, have you checked on Abuelo in the past day or two? What's that, mija? He seemed upset just now. He was talking. Whole sentences that made sense. Have you ever heard of the shadow shapers? Something happened in Maria's face. The slightest clenching of her cheek muscles, maybe, or perhaps her eyes narrowing the tiniest bit. Whatever it was, Sierra had seen it happen again and again throughout her life. Ask the wrong question, mention some untouchable topic, just catch her mother at the wrong moment, and it was like some invisible barrier sprang into place. I don't know what that is, Sierra. Maria smiled just a little, but her voice was ice. She turned quickly back to the dishes. That's weird, Sierra said, because you look an awful lot like you know what I'm talking about. Sierra. I said I don't know. I'll check on your grandfather later. It would have been so much better if she'd just yell and scream like a normal mom. Instead, she didn't even raise her voice. Sierra knew that was that. The conversation was over. The battle lost. Fine, Sierra turned. Come on, Benny. Sierra, come back, Maria called but her voice sounded empty.
Chapter 3